I, Jose Villarreal, am from the Farmington, New Mexico area, born and raised. My family moved here from southern Colorado when I was born in hopes for more opportunities as Monte Vista and Antonito, Colorado are very small village towns where my parents are from. Actually, Antonito is so small there is only one main street from the beginning to end of town. Farmington is a small town as well and in my opinion is still attempting to form its identity and culture. Being from here, I hadn't fully grasped what culture meant until I met my wife and our little family traveled to her homeland. My loving wife is from Spain where culture is rich and ancient. The Spaniards have been a unique European homogenous culture since the completion of the Reconquista, but some of their infrastructure dates back 3100 years. In fact, Cariz, which is the oldest city in Spain, is one of the oldest cities in the world. My wife actually took us to Cariz this last summer and it was gorgeous. It, was one of the it is one of the furthest southeast sections of the Spanish peninsula where Africa is only a few distant miles across the ocean. Cariz and other cities where Spaniards densely populate are an attraction for many travelers not only from Europe but from around the world. In fact, tourism is one of Spain's main sources of revenue. There are several unique cities in Spain that offer a different tradition in each city with rich history that consists of Moorish palaces and Gothic cathedrals amongst modern buildings and larger, in larger cities such as Barcelona and Madrid. Madrid pop, Madrid's population or metropolitan population as of 2017 is 6.5 million according to worldpopulationreview.com. Even though the entire country of Spain is comparable in size to New Mexico, its population exceeds the population of New Mexico 1,000 fold. In these, it is these people that have practiced their way of life that have ga fully gained my interest and exceeded my expectations of the country that make it a very possible and hopeful migration of my little family. Some of their main attractions are their food and wine and of course their coastal surroundings. They eat and drink off of their own land and sea. One of the main differences from America is that in Spain they hardly ever use a freezer. Everything they eat and drink is freshly caught the same day and sold in a cafeteria or in the marketplace. They have several vineyards throughout the country that are home to some of the best wines in the world and they also produce a huge portion of olive oil consumed worldwide. Along with food and drink, they have an entirely different schedule for lunch and dinner than the rest of the world, including all of Europe, which leads to the next and most important reason we want to migrate back to my wife's land. Their lifestyle. As mentioned before, Spaniards are a different culture than the rest of the world in the way they live day to day, and this culture is ancient and has passed from generation to generation. An example is that they greet each other, family member or stranger, with a kiss on the cheek, on each cheek. The Spanish people are much more affectionate and more physically personal than any other culture on this planet. Their eating schedules are much more different also as mentioned before. A normal lunch time in Spain is from 2 to 4 p.m. and this includes the working class. They also spend a minimum of two hours per lunch period. This alone introduces the work to live lifestyle that the rest of the world is unfamiliar with. Depending on your occupation in Spain, which is true for most banking hours, some workplaces close their doors for the day as early as 1 p.m. every day. If a Spaniard is not spending time with family during these lunch hours of the day, they are walking to meet up with friends to socialize at a local cafeteria or a beach for some tapas or pinchos. Socializing with friends and family is commonplace as well as walking from destination to destination. As evening and dinner get near, Spaniards tend to, if eating outside or cooking in their homes, they once again socialize with friends or family before, during, and after. If walking to, tip to dinner, a typical evening would consist of leaving your house around 7 or 8 p.m., arriving at, at a cafeteria and enjoying some pinchos with a glass of wine and socializing for a couple of hours before heading to dinner around 10 or 11 p.m. 
and then continuing with the same group or even meeting up with an entirely different set of friends and family. Dinner is served slowly and with delicacy as Spaniards have the most tasteful and wonderfully prepared dishes. Every meal that I have ever eaten there, whether at, at an upscale restaurant or at a simple cafeteria, the food and drink were prepared with class and a craftiness that one would think was a form of art. When finished with dinner, people continue to converse amongst themselves until the late evening is full. It is this work to live lifestyle that Spaniards have practiced for generations that, in my opinion, keep kids youthful longer and every day is lived to the fullest. The 2008 through 2017 Spanish financial crisis, also known as the Great Recession in Spain or the Great Spanish Depression, began in 08 during the world financial crisis of 2007 through 08. In 2012, it made Spain a late participant in the European sovereign debt crisis when the country was unable to bail out its financial sector due and had to apply for a 100 billion euro rescue package provided by the European Stability Mechanism. The main cause of Spain's crisis was the housing bubble and the accompanying unsustainably high GDP growth rate. The ballooning tax revenues from the booming property investment and construction sectors kept the Spanish government's revenue in surplus despite strong increases in expenditure until 2007. The Spanish government supported the critical develop development by relaxing supervision of the financial sector and thereby allowing the banks to violate international accounting standards. The banks in Spain were able to hide losses and earnings volatility, mislead regulators, analysts and investors and thereby finance the Spanish real estate bubble. The results of the crisis were devastating for Spain, including a strong economic downturn, a severe increase in unemployment and bankruptcies of major companies. According to current sources, the Spanish economy is growing again, expanding at around 3% pace over the last year, producing goods for export, generating jobs, and restoring a sense of normalcy to a nation that has been saturated in despair. This is good news for not nearly for Spain, but for Europe and the rest of the global economy. During the last decade, Spain's unemployment peaked at, a, at an astounding 26%. Now, Spain's economy has returned to its pre-crisis size, according to data released by their government. This seemingly puts the finish to one of the worst economic catastrophes to play out in Europe since the years of World War II. It suggests that the continent, still grappling with formidable, even existential challenges, has finally achieved recovery. Spain's economic reconfiguration is widely hailed as a key driver of growth. During this growth, Spain is home to some of the latest infrastructure and architecture that places them in the same category as one of the elite destinations in the world to migrate to and also contains one of the best opportunities for innovation. In fact, at this moment in time, it may be the greatest opportunity for a startup business because of the rebirth of the Spanish economy. Spain's swelling exports have aided once struggling companies, helping restore the tax government's tax revenues which plummeted during the crisis. Barcelona's local tax revenues have grown modestly from 2.5 billion euro in 2013 to anticipated yield of more than 2.7 billion euro this year. These key performance indicators proving Spain's revitalization, the digital marketing world is set for exponential growth as well. This is where my potentiality for a job in this country becomes relatively attainable. The fact is, young professionals have arrived from around the world. These young professionals are gaining access to jobs that were once a stronghold from local Spanish people that desperately needed and still do need their jobs in order to keep their family roots in Spain. Mm -hmm. 
Spain is also known for some of the latest fashion and design in the entire world. Sara is one of the world's largest and most popular women's apparel retail stores and they originate in Spain. Speaking of apparel, the Spaniards are a classy people in general and they display their respect for the human race by the elegant apparel they wear day to day and their homogenous lifestyle. In addition, their healthy eating habits and walking everywhere they go enhances their lifespan. It is with this change in mindset, accepting that they were once wrong amidst their financial crisis and adapting to relevant worldwide technological advancement that there may be one or several great opportunities to seek out a job that can either be Europe-based or American-based that conforms to my knowledge and experience as a previous successful business owner and entrepreneur. At this moment, there are several hundred job openings on Glassdoor website specifically outlining job descriptions catered to a digital marketing specialist. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed my presentation. Ciao.